Hey gang, before we go any further today, let me tell you about one of my other favorite marketing podcasts. I think you're really going to enjoy. Believe it or not, it's a fun and funny podcast about email marketing. It's called The Email Marketing Show. They recently did an amazing episode called Six Lies Your Email Marketing Platform is Telling You, which I loved because these guys are so genuine and real in their opinions about what's working and what doesn't in email marketing today. You should definitely check them out by finding The Email Marketing Show wherever you get your podcasts or at emailmarketingheroes.com. Hi, I'm Sarah Panous, and if you work in the content marketing space, I invite you to subscribe to the Marketing with Empathy podcast. Join me and other industry experts as we share ideas to help you connect with your audience to drive better business results. I've spent the last 20 years driving content for billion-dollar brands. Now I help marketers build winning brand storytelling strategies to reduce feelings of overwhelm and confusion. Think of it as a content marketing jam session mixed with chicken soup for the soul. Subscribe to Marketing with Empathy today. On this episode of Winfluence. If you look at, uh, again, how the email platforms rank your engagement, clicking on a link is better than opening an email. Replying to an email is better than clicking on a link. Forwarding an email to somebody else is like the top of the tree. Like That's the best thing that you can ask for somebody to do. And then obviously, when you sink down below that level, you're looking at things like reporting it as spam is a bad thing. Unsubscribing is not a great thing for the platform's point of view. Um, so what we're really looking to do here is to create as much engagement as possible. And if we consider that people uh, replying to your emails or clicking on stuff is good levels of engagement, then we do want to encourage that as often as possible. There's a difference between being an influencer and actually influencing. I'm Jason Falls, and in this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate that difference. Welcome to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. We've discussed something very important on this program a number of times now. In fact, it has come up a lot in just the last few shows. Too many content creators and influencers are building their homes on borrowed ground. And someday the landlord may well swoop in and hand them an eviction notice. That analogy is actually a toned down version of reality, though. When an influencer or content creator puts all their content on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, or Facebook, they're building their house on borrowed ground. When they build an audience there, they are decorating and investing in that house too. And someday, the landlord may well swoop in and not only hand them an eviction notice, but take all their stuff too. So we've cautioned content creators, and I've prognosticated a bit and predicted we're soon to see a pendulum swing back to old-school content creation. I think influencers will be wise to build their own connection with their communities on their own property, on blogs. Maybe subscription-based social platforms like Fanbase, where the creator owns and controls most of the territory. And making sure that community and follower connection is strong by moving followers and subscribers to actual subscribers, as in email subscribers. Build your list. It's not just advice for businesses. Well, it is, but content creators don't often think of what they do as a business, but they are, or their content engine is. Email marketing is not just a thing. It is imperative for any business to leverage to succeed. Email marketing is still the most effective channel in the digital marketing spectrum in terms of average return on investment. Who better to help us understand that and how influencers can leverage email marketing to protect their house and their stuff than the email marketing heroes? Rob and Kennedy are the hosts of the email marketing show. You've probably heard me talking about them on a promo before this program. They're also supporters of the Marketing Podcast Network. But their content is so useful and fun, I wanted to dive in deeper with them here on Winfluence. We're going to do just that today on the show. And be sure to listen for Rob's rundown of how you should build narratives and a storyline in every email you write. Such good advice in here. You're going to learn some great stuff today, folks. Before we get to that, I want to share something our friends at Storyblock have to make you smarter. It's a new report called The State of Content Management and is a very useful survey of 515 businesses in the United States and Europe, companies just like yours, and how they are approaching content distribution through their digital channels in 2022. Think about this, folks. You have to provide content for your website, maybe also a mobile app, 
Then you've got e-commerce platforms. Then there's voice-activated speakers. There's social media channels. Managing content is more complex today than ever. Get insights and ideas on how companies like yours are tackling the content challenge with the State of Content Management Report from Storyblock. Just go to storyblock.com slash winfluence for your free report. That's storyblock without the C, S-T-O-R-Y-B-L-O-K dot com slash winfluence. Storyblock is a headless content management system rated as the number one CMS in 2022 by G2. It is also a new partner of the Marketing Podcast Network. So go get that report, storyblock.com slash winfluence, storyblock without the C dot com slash winfluence. And folks, be sure to stick around after the great email advice from our guests today. I want to remind you about an event coming up where we can meet IRL and I've got a discount code for you as well. Get ready for some jolly good fun. Robin Kennedy, you're British. And they're next on Winfluence. So, uh, Robin Kennedy, um, I need help with my own email marketing, but that's not why you're here. You're here to uh, help the listeners with theirs. Um, and I think the the first thing I want to start off, uh, Rob, with is there are a lot of content creators out there who are putting their content and their audience in someone else's basket, uh, namely Mark Zuckerberg's. Um, and talk to me a little bit about the importance of someone who is a content creator on Instagram or YouTube, TikTok or whatever, having their own email list. Because I think there's a lot of people out there who don't quite understand how important it is. I mean, definitely. And there's really two bits to this. The first part is the fact that, you know, we'd never build a house on borrowed land and all of that stuff. And it would be horrendous genuinely to think about having a house that you live in and you have a lovely time and you get married and have kids and they grow up and the, it's near the nice school and you make friends with the neighbors. And then somebody, the, the, the guy that, or the, the woman that owns the house comes along and kicks you out. And that's literally something that happens every day on the social platforms. We were just chatting to somebody the other day who's got like uh, three Instagram accounts for like different brands that she runs. Um, uh, like a theme page and then a couple of our own things as well and literally just like lost one of the accounts with tens of thousands of followers and is still fighting to get that back months and months and months later not because she's actually done anything wrong like i'm assuming everybody listening to this is all following the rules and you know doing what you're supposed to do but sometimes stuff goes wrong right i mean when you look at a company like we're a tiny little business and the processes in our business aren't perfect so like when you think about the processes in enormous organizations like you know meta and all of those things you, you realize like stuff does go wrong and stuff will fall through the cracks uh, rightly or wrongly and therefore some people are going to get banned and that's just a terrifying place to be i think on the flip side whereas if you if you own your email list right you can just take that data you own it if you want to change from one email platform to another for some reason because you don't like a change that they made or you don't like the new version of their email builder or something you can just download all those subscribers go to a different platform create an account there upload them there and you're ready to carry on and apart from some very subtle differences your subscribers your followers are like so unlikely to notice it's not like you can download all of your instagram followers and go and put them on tiktok or something it's not going to work that way so that's the first thing i think the second thing though is to talk about the huge I guess, competitive advantage that you get the minute that you are somebody who can deliver more than just a post on an Instagram feed or some reels or a, or a story or something like that, or a TikTok video. The minute you're somebody who says, actually, do you know what? I've got, you know, 52,000 followers on my Instagram account, but I've also got 12,000 of those people are also on my email list. And so actually we can like do a really 3D approach to, to putting your brand in front of them. We can do these amazing posts and all the stuff that you're currently doing, but I could also do a really powerful seven day email campaign where I'm going to, so they're, they're going to be seeing the social posts on, on the social platforms. They're also going to be receiving these emails, which means we're going to surround that market a lot more. And if you're the influencer in your space, in your niche, with your speciality, who can do that over everyone else who just has even a bigger Instagram following or a bigger TikTok following than you, then you're, you're going to win because you're going to be able to send more traffic, more, more importantly, more conversions. You just absolutely will. There's no equivocation about that at all. It's just true. And so I think if you're that person who uses social to build an audience and then you use email to build the business and to build the, the conversion side of it more than social, then that's going to give you a whole bunch of reasons to win. 
And here's the thing, right, with it is that uh, all brands, large or small, all know that the highest return on investment activity, the highest driver of direct sales, which is what they're looking for when they hire any kind of influencer, the highest driver of sales in the world is email marketing. It has the highest return on investment than any other type of marketing in the world. It's not us saying that. That's what we've researched and what we've found um, that other much, much smarter people than us uh, have, have discovered. Um, and so if you can show up and say, hey, not only can I do you some brand awareness and yes, do you some call to actions or some kind of read on my uh, my social platform, if you can say, I've got these people who are hyper engaged and I can send them a direct message right to their email inbox. The value of that is so high. You could be charging extra for that. That's another thing on your offer, on your list of different offers that you can make that perhaps others aren't making. And for the brands listening, if you can find an influencer who has the email list, that's where the conversion is going to happen. Plus, it's easier to track for a whole bunch of different reasons as well. Those things that are coming straight from an email click through to your brand and then turning it into a conversion. So you can like prove it a lot more easily as well. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, I could go off on a tangent about how the, la- the, the, the main thing lacking in influencer marketing software is the information about does this influencer have a website? Do they have an email list, et cetera? But that's a, that's a whole nother discussion and a tangent that I don't want to go down today, but I could get on my soapbox. However, I, the, what you just said, Kennedy leads me to the next sort of question. What about, you know, the Gen Z, the, the, the Gen Alpha uh, influencer out there who's grown up, you know, basically thumb scrolling um, and creating content on their phone and email is not a thing for them. And they come back to you and say, well, that's great, but nobody opens emails. Nobody reads emails. How do you respond to that? It's really interesting. I'll tell you why it's interesting is um, there's a few things. First of all, I there is there has been a significant change in the way that we all consume content. Hence the scrolling, and we're all going to have some kind of awful thumb condition when we're all old. Obviously, that's definitely going to happen. We're going to have I don't know Instagram thumb or something. We're all going to be diagnosed with uh, later. I'm sure <laughs> you heard it here first. Um, but uh, but um, what you got to remember is two really interesting facts. One of them to sign up for any of these social media platforms. Every single person needs an email address. That's how you sign up. So while not everybody has got uh, a a TikTok account, like I don't, right? We've all, all people with a TikTok account have got an email address. And all people, uh, not all people with an email address have, have got an Instagram account, but all the people who've got an Instagram account have also got an email address. So to sign up for any of those platforms, they definitely need to have an email address. The second thing is, The people who run these platforms, the people who founded these platforms, they are the highest sender of email in the world. So do you remember when when Facebook started and every time you got poked or tagged, uh, do you remember those days when it was okay to poke strangers on the internet? We, we, We get an email. That's how they tell us. That's how they drive us back to the platform to say, you've been tagged in this or you, this person's commented on that. They're sending emails to do it. They wouldn't be spending so much effort, so much resource to be the highest centers of email in the world if that didn't work. Of course it works, and that's why they do it. And here's the really interesting thing. This email and social thing is a two-way relationship. It's not an all give or all take relationship. So if you want to if you've put up a new post and you want to get that quick surge of likes, engagement, uh, comments, shares, saves to that post, a really good way of doing that is to slap out a quick email to your listeners and say, "Hey, I just posted this new thing. Go check it out." You're going to end up with a surge of people going and checking out that to give you that initial boost. So you can use it in that direction. We did that when we first started our Facebook group. We started a Facebook group a a couple of years. Well, here's the funny thing. We started a Facebook group about five years ago, and it was an elephant graveyard. It was just silence because we thought, oh, we'll start a Facebook group and then we'll just, uh, it'll happen, won't it? No, obviously not. Um, so then we started another one called the Email Marketing Show Community. Um, and then we thought, when we do that, 
we'll actually put the effort in. But of course, we wanted to, as soon as we went in, there was like, I don't know, 100 people in there to begin with, if that, maybe 50. And of course, there was no engagement. So what did we do? We thought, why don't we email the list when we put a post in there saying, hey, we've just asked a really interesting question. Here's the interesting question we've asked. We'd love your comments on it click here to go and comment on it in the group. And that meant more of our email subscribers joined the group. Of course, that was the initial thing that happened because we had a bigger email list than we did group at the time. But it meant that we got lots of people who were already in the group commenting on the post and giving us that engagement to make it look hyperactive. And then, of course, you want to do the reverse. You want to get the people who are on your socials over to your email list. And there's a whole bunch of techniques we can talk about doing that again uh, if we get to that part of the conversation. Well, sure. So... Uh, I guess my follow-up question to that is, you know, we're talking to people out there who know how to create content, um, and email is no different. It's a content channel. Um, and so if you've convinced them, okay, email works, people open emails, everybody's got an email account, that's great. But I create content for Instagram. I create short-form videos on TikTok, et cetera. I'm not sure that I can create content that's going to get people to open the damn email. So what are some sort of best practices on getting people to actually open your email? Well, you're probably right. We should all just give up, shouldn't we? Let's not bother. <laughs> um, I, I think the, the big thing here is to realize that the, the, the big change that's happening with email is that we're moving away from like email newsletters. That's the major problem is that most, especially that younger demographic that you talked about before, most of the emails they receive are going to be from like, you know, HelloFresh or, you know, whatever the latest trendy company is sending them stuff that's very old school newsletter format. It's the kind of thing where they could create that a few years ago in school. They'd use my Microsoft Publisher or whatever they use now to make um, to make a newsletter that's got sections and all of that stuff. And actually, what we really need to flip back to is to remember that these days, and, and you're so right, I'm so glad you said it, because this is our big mantra that we preach all the time, is that email is just another content channel. All we do on the computer, on our phones, is like click buttons, type things, and scroll. And so you can do that in Instagram, or you can do that uh, to make a script for a video, or you can do that to write an email. And so ultimately, email is just another app on their phone. It sits there between TikTok and uh, Tinder or something. And basically, that's a, it's just another app on their phone. Most people, an increasing number, Numbers of people check their emails on their phone, again, especially that younger crowd. And so what that means is that, you know, they get push notifications when their emails come in, just like they do when somebody comments on a photo, on a post, on a uh, post or a photo or that kind of thing. And so really what we're looking to do is the same thing that we do with social. We want to make sure that we are telling stories. We want to make sure that we're giving people a behind the scenes peek. Ultimately, what we're all looking for is to turn our lives as you know people of influence. We're looking to turn our lives into a reality TV story. Uh, you know, showing people what's going on behind the scenes. When you see like people on Instagram doing fashion hauls from these big fashion labels and stuff, what they're actually doing is saying, "I've got this package of clothes. You're inside my room. You're going to watch me try them on, and sure, I'll spin around and the clothes will change by magic because that's what transitions can do." But ultimately, you're, it's reality TV. We're seeing a peek behind the curtain and. Reality TV is obviously just becoming more and more important. And it's reality TV with the control taken back. So what Instagram and TikTok do is to give people a really good visual impression, a visual snapshot behind the scenes of somebody's life. They're not the perfect place, though, to go into more personality driven detail, especially when, you know, algorithms are favoring stuff with like music, you know, popular trending music rather than talking over the top of it and that kind of thing. Whereas email gives you a really good short burst of personality really, really quickly by telling the interesting stories that are going on behind the scenes in your life. So what we recommend that you're doing, because ultimately people follow influencers because they're interested in the influencer and, and the stuff that there's going on in their life, is to tell the interesting, um, unusual, uh, scary, funny, sad, happy, eventful stories that are going on in our everyday lives. And we're not talking about, you know, you've got to win, you know, the national championships in something every day to have anything to write about. Like it's literally, we have a technique to look for the most boring thing that, sorry, the, the least boring thing that happened to me in the last 24 hours, not the most boring thing. That's a terrible idea. Look for the least boring thing that happened to you in the last 24 hours. And that could be you've just bought a new washing machine. It could be your dog went outside and did something funny in the garden. Uh, it could be that your mum, dad, sister, brother, daughter, uncle, auntie said or did something that's unusual. It can be literally any kind of story. And these are the stories that you can't wait to tell your friends when you next see them. You can't wait to tell your kids when they get home from school. You can't wait to tell your partner when they get home from work, something like that. Those kind of stories. And you never run out of those. You've always got those stories around you. 
And what that does is it builds, again, a, a deeper picture of who you are over just a video of you trying on that new thing or you demonstrating that new product or you doing that unboxing video. It shows people a deeper view of you as a, as a human. And you can link all of that stuff to the thing that you're promoting and to the brand that you're you're, you're being paid to push. And so again, that gives a, a really good thing. Again, if you look at the lots of long, slightly longer form content for influencers on YouTube, one of the things that you'll see a lot, of course, is that these people are doing like Q and A videos that are becoming more and more popular where, where their followers are sending in questions and they're just answering their questions. Like how much did you earn from that video? And they answer the question and that's because people care and they're not just interested in the brands you promote or your opinions behind those brands or any of those things. They actually want to know more about you. And email gives you a really deep way to do that in short, you know, as often as every day, short bursts that then just stacks on top of the more sort of visual representative content that you're putting on the platforms. You know, I, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but, uh, about 10 years ago, I, uh, co-authored a book about email marketing and, uh, the, the book was called the rebel's guide to email marketing. And in the book, DJ Waldo, my co-author and I basically took a bunch of the quote unquote rules of email marketing and, uh, destroyed them basically said, you know, there, there was a rule back then that you should never use all caps in your subject line. And we gave examples of why that rule was basically bullshit. You could use all caps in certain circumstances. It was contextual, certainly. But I think that's a lot of what you guys have been doing lately is saying, here's what, I know you've got a, a podcast episode, recent podcast episode, where here's what the email marketing providers are telling you that are that it's all wrong, right? So help us, Kennedy, take us through some rules that people are throwing at us out there about email marketing that are probably not rules you necessarily need to follow and why. Yeah, I mean, there's so many of these sort of classic things. And unfortunately, they're mostly based on people. I have this huge problem generally in life, not just with this stuff. I'm about to go on off on one now, but um, basically about people stating stuff as fact when it's actually just in their experience in a particular circumstance, right? So we like to go and sort of push these things for our for our world. So one of those things is that you should not email more than once a week. Well, if email is a content channel, as it is now, like the problem with most email marketing is it hasn't matured. It hasn't grown up into the maturity of TikTok, of Instagram, where it needs to be more than one. Can you imagine if you only post on Instagram once a week, what would happen? Well, nothing would happen. It would be terrible. So if, it is an e if email is a content channel, we need to show up more often. But what we don't want to do, and here's a massive problem that we see all the time, is the reason you email should not be to tell people about your products or services. I know that sounds crazy. And everyone's thinking, hang on. Hey, I was with these guys a little bit. I kind of thought it was cool. But now this guy's obviously been on the vodka. I get it, right? But here's the thing. If, and this is, nobody talks about this, and this is astounding to us. If the only reason someone emails you is to tell you what the latest discount special offer is or what are, or their new product in their range is, who opens that email? Only people who want to know if I can get a good deal this week. Only people who are quite far down that sort of purchasing journey. They're quite far down the, the funnel or, or whatever you want to call it. But the best marketing that you really want to do, when you put your time into writing some good words in an email, that's mostly wasted if the people who are opening the email are already looking to buy. They're in the buyer stage of, of that investment, of that journey. So instead, if your emails have value in and of themselves, regardless of whether you put an offer to buy something. Or when I say offer, I don't just mean to go and buy something. It could be a free thing. It could be go and check out this episode of our podcast or this thing in the group or this free thing or this blog post or, or this or whatever. So if the email itself has value in it, then more people have a reason to open it because they know that by opening your email, they're going to get, they're going to learn something. They're going to feel something. They're going to hear something that's going to help them. And that means you get to put your sales message in front of more people because that means these want the next thing, which is people say the thing that gets your emails opened is the subject line. Not true. Here's the proof. It's really simple. If my friend Jason here sends me an email with no subject line at all. If my mum 
sends me an email with no subject line at all, I'm definitely going to open the email. Because the thing that gets your email opened is your name in that left-hand column and then their subconscious response their emotional response to that name. So when they say Jason, what do they think? Do they think, oh, that's that handsome bearded fellow who's really good? Or do they think, that's that dirty, rotten, spammy bloke who only ever tells you about stuff he's got for sale? Well, we know it's the first one, so I'm going to open all of Jason's emails. So it's your reputation in people's minds that gets the email opened, not the subject line. That's really important. And that means if only all you ever do is show up and tell people what they can buy from you, You're ruining your reputation in their mind. Every time you use a mislead, every time one of those people uses a misleading subject line to trick you into opening that email, you know, like where it says um, PayPal notification, you go, oh, oh, what's that? And you click on it and you go, you could get a PayPal notification making sales every single day if you use my seven step formula. Yeah, but like that's when you immediately feel sick in your mouth. I think I'm never trusting that bozo again. So that's the next one. Here's another big one. A lot of, luckily, less and less platforms are now doing this. But one of the things that people talk about, there's two things. One is open rates, forget them, because they don't matter. They are inaccurate. Since iOS 15 rolled out ages ago, Apple now marks every email that's received through the mail app as opened, whether it's opened or not. On the flip side, Android do the opposite and mark them as not opened by blocking the open reporting. So now, if you're relying anything, your follow-up, your anything, based on whether someone's opened the email or not, you are definitely emailing people who have opened it, and you're definitely not opening, not not emailing people who have not opened it, right? That is definitely happening. So instead, focus on your click-through rate of the of the links in your emails not the link not not on the number of people or the percentage of people who are opening the final one and this one is a piece of advice we see doing air quotes gurus who should know blum and better giving out really experienced people and that is to resend the same email to people who didn't open it. There's a button in some platform that says resend to unopens. Two great reasons not to do that. One, we've just talked about the fact that's inaccurate data anyway. So you're definitely resending to people who have opened and that's annoying. But psychologically speaking, that email didn't grab their attention the first time. <laughs> Why would it do it the second time? That's true. That's very true. There's actually an interesting, there's an interesting third bit on that as well, which is what you've got to remember is that what you know, Gmail and AOL and Yahoo and all those people see you doing is hurling the same email, even with a different subject line, hurling the same email out to a whole bunch of people who didn't engage with it the day before. And so not only is it about the psychological thing of it didn't appeal to them yesterday, it probably won't appeal them to, to them today. Because of course, some people just probably didn't check their emails yesterday. Some people will check their emails today and they might see it. But of course, What's the only other demographic demographic of people who hurl the same email out over and over and over again, regardless of the response, like automated bots and spammers? Um, so like it's, it's horrendous for deliverability for the platforms to see you doing that. Wow. So I want to I want to give a little bit of pushback or at least ask for some clarification here. Uh, either one of you obviously can take this. So, Kennedy, you were talking about how the important thing is not to focus on the open rates, but to talk about the click through rate. But we're also making the argument that email marketing is a content platform. I'm not necessarily baking in a bunch of click through opportunities if I'm, you know, writing a, a narrative piece or something like that or showing them a video, although certainly with video, you do have to click through. So that kind of answers my question on that. But if I'm not primarily trying to drive people to another platform, but I'm trying to deliver content in this actual email communication, how does that jive? So we actually, uh, we, so first of all, we recommend that you put something to click in as close to a hundred percent of your emails as possible. And I'll talk through some of the scenarios where it might feel like you can't do that. And, and I'll give you our, idea, our ideas on it. And the primary thing is that that is clicking on links is if you look at like, again, how the email platforms rank your engagement, clicking on a link is better than opening an email. Replying to an email is better than clicking on a link. Forwarding an email to somebody else is like the top of the tree. Like that's the best thing that you could ask for somebody to do. And then obviously when you sink down below that level, you're looking at things like reporting it as spam is a bad thing. Unsubscribing is not a great thing for the platform's point of view. Um, so what we're really looking to do here is to create as much engagement as possible. And if we consider that people uh, replying to your emails or clicking on stuff is good levels of engagement, then we do want to encourage that as often as possible. So for us, again, we try and put 
in every email that we possibly can, we'll have something for somebody to click on. And the, the key really here is two things. One, to use a little bit of variety. So sometimes you might be sending somebody to go and look at a post on the social platform. Sometimes you might be sending them directly to, uh, you know, like a landing page that the brand have given you. Sometimes you might be sending them to watch uh, something else. So that's one option. Another option is to use things like polls. So you can have like a little link, a little list of links and ask somebody to like vote on one of them. So quick quiz, which of these do you think? And when they click on it, it takes them across to a brand page, which answers the question. And it's sort of based on what they click, that kind of thing. Little bits of just quirky creativity to get people to click. And we've got a really cool resource, actually a free resource that will help you with that, which we'll talk about at the end. But that's one, that's one thing. And then the second part to all of this is, um, our sort of formula for baking these click-through call to actions into every email. Most of the emails that we send follow this format. I talked about the story that we that I mentioned at the beginning. All of our emails more or less follow this format of story, lesson, offer, S-L-O, right? Story, lesson, offer. And so this is something you can do in every email that you send without it ever feeling samey, without it ever getting bland, without you ever running out of ideas, without you ever running out of content, without you ever, without you ever getting stuck with writer's block or that kind of thing. And so the first bit is some interesting, innocuous, different, random story that's happened to you in the last 24 hours or at some point in your life. Sometimes if literally nothing has happened in the last 24 hours, we'll like look back to like a funny thing that happened at school or a different thing that happened at school or an interesting thing that happened at school or something like that. Uh, so anyway, you tell some kind of little story, like 50 to hundred words tops, and then you, tr- you segue from that story into some kind of lesson. Now, what do we mean by lesson? Well, really, we just mean anything of some kind of value that has a kind of moral to it, a kind of story, a a kind of lesson to it, a kind of fable to it. That's what we're looking for, is to take the story and turn it into something that means something. So you might like, so for example, obviously we, most of the time we're sending emails and we're teaching email marketing stuff. It's a little bit meta, but, um, we'll, we'll get there. So like during that, that without having to pay any rights, can you say the word meta anymore? Is that I like, think I, I think I can. Yeah. yeah um, that was five with, bucks out of your Bitcoin account. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for example, during, this is just a random example, but during the, during the pandemic, the COVID-19, as if, as if we've lived through a different one, right? During the COVID-19, during the Spanish, who knows? Flu, mate, who knows? <laughs> During the COVID-19 pandemic, um, I wanted to buy a new mattress and it's a terrible time to decide that your mattress is about to give away and you want to buy a new one because you can't go to the stores, all the shops are shut and you don't know what to do. And a mattress is obviously a thing that you've got to like, it's got to feel right. It's got to be just the right level of firmness, softness, everything. So basically I had to buy a mattress and I had to buy a mattress on the internet. So in the end, what meant, what that meant was I had to kind of just guess and hope for the best. And that was the kind of story. I wanted to buy a mattress. I've just bought a mattress. Me and my girlfriend spent ages browsing all the different mattresses, trying to figure out what kind of mattress we want. And in the end, we just had to kind of go for it and hope for the best. That was the story. Nothing interesting, nothing different. It's just a story. And then the lesson from that is, again, we teach email marketing. So the lesson from that is, actually, do you know what? Buying anything on the internet is difficult because you don't know if you can trust what's on the other end. You don't know whether it's actually as good quality as they say it's going to be. You don't know if it's going to be everything they say it's going to be. You don't know if the service and the delivery time is going to be as good as they say it's going to be. So buying anything on the internet is difficult. One of the ways you can get over that is by using email to build a relationship with the subscriber so that even if they don't know that they can trust in the specific product they can trust in you to look after them and therefore regardless of what happens this is going to be a good experience that's the lesson and so what you can do is for whatever brand you're promoting or if you're like between promotions like if you're just doing your own stuff you can just this can be a lesson because again most people follow influencers are interested in the in the life of an influencer even though they've got no ambition to be one most everyday average joe average jane people are are interested in the life of the influencers they follow. So that can turn into a, here's an interesting thing I learned by that YouTube video that got, you know, copyright struck the other day. Here's an interesting thing that I learned by that Instagram post that got me shadow banned or whatever, you know, so you can tell the interesting lessons about the stuff that's going on in your life, which is interesting to people. And at the end you say, in fact, if you want to go and see the video that I've done to replace that video that got struck down, or if you want to go and see the poster, you can send them to there. So it's almost always, regardless of whether you've got a promo happening right now, it's almost always possible to have a story, a lesson based on the story, and then some kind of offer. And the offer again can be anything. It can be go and use my discount code such and such to get this special offer from brand, or it can be um, go here and look at this Instagram post or watch this reel or, you know, respond to this survey or like do something else. It can be any offer at all. So 
for us, we would say in as close to a hundred percent of emails as possible, have something to click on. But if you ever can't do it for some reason, just give them a different call to action. It could be reply. It could be forward this email onto a friend. Um, and again, influencers, I think are in a better position to do that than most businesses are uh, like better than we would be, for example, because most influencers have built an audience just by being amazing people. Kennedy and I are not interesting enough that people just hang around and listen to us. They hang around and listen to us because we teach email marketing and this stuff we teach is useful. But like, if you look at what most influencers have built, they've built audiences just by being cool people that people aspire to be like, and to look up to and to want to like emulate. And so that gives you an amazing ability to demand effectively or command, I should say, people replying to your emails, forwarding it onto other people, sharing the word and that kind of thing. So your offers can be anything. What you're looking to push for is engagement beyond the open. So of course they've got to open the email and you want to do stuff to get them to open it. We just recommend ignoring the number, the open rate number itself you can ignore. You definitely want to do stuff to get people to open. And then beyond that, above that, you want to get people to click, reply, and forward your emails as much as you can. Yeah. It's almost like the difference between, you know, reach impressions and conversion, right? Reach is great, but if you don't have conversion, then it doesn't matter. So translating that to email open rates, great, but if you can't get someone to click through to something, take an action, then it probably doesn't matter. Well, I think it's safe to say that the brand people out there listening, uh, probably, uh, you've ruined their day. Uh, because they realize their email marketing sucks and they need to change it at all. The influencers out there listening, the content creators probably are like, oh, wow, this is a new world for me. I can go out and do something cool. So thank you both for your time and your insights. Uh, Rob or Kennedy, either one, tell me uh, where those great resources are, uh, how to get to the website, how to get to the podcast and and what else, uh, where else can people find you on the interwebs? Oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's been great hanging out, Jason, as usual. So uh, if you we've put together a little, um, actually, it's quite detailed uh, booklet called, uh, it's called Click Tricks. And it's 12 really creative different ways of presenting your links in your emails. So they're always exciting and different to drive more clicks from the very next email that you send. And we've put it over at emailmarketingheroes.com slash winfluence. I'm sure you know how to spell that. Emailmarketingheroes.com slash Winfluence. And you'll be able to just download it completely free there. We also hang out quite a bit on Instagram at Rob and Kennedy. And if you want to hear Rob and I talking funnily and humorously and stupidly about email marketing every single week, we have a podcast called The Email Marketing Show. You'll find out wherever you get your podcasts. Well, I can assure you that there will be many people who subscribe because even if it's just to listen to your accents, people in America will subscribe because we <laughs> love British accents. I don't know why, but we do. Well, yeah. love it. we'll, we'll take it. We'll take it. <laughs> I'll keep doing this British accent because I'm actually from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Normally when I open up a, a conference somewhere and I did this in London once, uh, I was at Emirates stadium up in the club area and I was at a conference and I walked out and I said, howdy, how y'all doing? As you can tell, I'm from South London. And that went over. Really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> how can you not want to run and subscribe to that podcast? So useful, so much energy, so entertaining. Go subscribe to the email marketing show at emailmarketingheroes.com or search for the email marketing show wherever you get your podcasts. And do go get that custom resource made just for us, emailmarketingheroes.com slash winfluence. Very nice of them to do that. And the more of you go download, the more impressive they think I am or we are. So go do that, emailmarketingheroes.com slash winfluence. One last thing today, folks, the Influencer Marketing Show is fast approaching. It is in New York City on April 27th, just a couple of weeks away. I have a discount code for you to get tickets to join me there. So get out a pen and paper or that URL bar, get it ready to go. Type in this URL in a minute. The Influencer Marketing Show is being held in North America for the first time. It is a one-day event in New York City, just off Broadway at the New World Stages on West 50th. It will be Wednesday, April 27th, 2022, just a couple of weeks away. I will be chairing one of the stages as well as moderating a panel featuring Pete Kennedy from Tagger, the presenting sponsor of this podcast, and Jenny Heinrich, who leads influencer marketing strategy for Ketchum, one of the Omnicom companies. Go see the full speaker and topic lineup and get your tickets at jason.online slash imsfalls. That's jason.online slash I-M-S-Falls. 
And that's short for Influencer Marketing Show, IMS Falls. And when you check out, be sure to use the code FALLS, all caps, F-A-L-L-S, because that will get you a 15% discount just for listening to Influence. Jason.online slash IMS Falls. And it has come to my attention that Winfluence needs more reviews on the various podcast apps. So you have a duty today. If you listen on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or somewhere else, take a moment, won't you, and drop some stars in a review. It helps more people find the show. Want to help make a future episode of Winfluence awesome? Ask your question about influence or influence marketing that you want my answer to or take on. Record a voice memo and send it via email or just send a regular email if you don't want to record yourself to jason at jasonfalls.com. I may use your comment on a future episode or your question to inspire a show topic. If I do, I'll send you a signed copy of Winfluence the book as a thank you. Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast, is an audio companion to my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my periodic newsletter, or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening. And remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. How do we use communication to make the world a better place? I'm Dan Farkas, part of the Marketing Podcast Network. My new podcast, The Strategic Communicator, tries to answer that question. We feature industry leaders who offer tangible advice you could actually use after the show, and we'll learn about the people behind the process. Let's use communication to bring about a better planet. Subscribe today to The Strategic Communicator Podcast on the Marketing Podcast Network. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.